This episode of Muddy River Gems is brought to you by Dot Foods. I think what it comes down to is the culture and the people. Our culture here at Dot is like no other. I've never experienced anything like what I've lived with for the last 12 years. Dot is very diverse. It is truly a family-owned business, but it is a family inside and out. You always feel like you matter and you play a big hand in the pot. There's so many opportunities to make a difference at DOT and really contribute to the success of the organization. In this edition of Muddy River Gems, sponsored by DOT Foods, we'll learn how the heritage seekers in Palmyra, Missouri, some 50 years ago, decided to preserve one of the oldest brick buildings in town and we'll look at the outcome of that preservation. Gary Stuhlman, uh, you, you've been associated with the Gardner Museum for a long time. This old house, I mean, in Palmyra in 1828, when this brick building was built, there wouldn't have probably been any there other brick buildings, would there? No, it was probably one of the early uh, houses that, that used the brick uh, in that time frame because Palmyra only started in 1819, so yeah. yeah. And so the rest of the town would have been log log cabins, probably. Possibly, right? yeah. Some of the initial early buildings would be yes. And there are many log buildings on that street going toward the courthouse mm -hmm. that have been covered up like this. So. Yeah. We're looking at as we look at this. We're looking at, if we look at the front of the house, and you can see where the where the top where the design goes up to the chimney and then back right. down. You can kind of see where the original house would, right. would have stood. Um, and that was you. What was built for what? What was the, what It was, was first uh, built as a dram shop or a tavern, and um, it would it changed hands fairly quickly after it was first built and uh, into uh, and it turned into a uh, um, stagecoach stop and that. But it always was a public building where people went in. Mm -hmm. It was a commerce for the commerce of the city, mm -hmm. and, and it never changed from that. It did turn into a private residence later on. A stagecoach stop. Yes. Okay. So first a barn and inn, then a stagecoach stop. And the stagecoach stop, what, what was the route from where to where? It was from here to Des Moines, Iowa, which was a course of about 225 miles. So okay. it was a long run. Yeah, it was. And it, it, did it start in St. Louis? It could have. Uh, of course, they would have had different stops. I'm sure they, yeah. they uh, for, but the story was from here to Des Moines was uh, called the Tri-Weekly. And the story was that uh, they would go to Des Moines and try to get back by the end of the week. <laughs> okay. Now this thing has gone through a number of a number. Now back in 1970, your historical group got involved in wanting to save this building. Yes. It would have been torn down. It would have been torn down. They had a buyer that was interested in the lot, and uh, it was in pretty poor shape, and uh, they was getting ready to be torn down. The city was making arrangements. And then the heritage seekers and a group of people saved it mm -hmm. and got it and restored it. Got it on the National Historic yes. Registry? Yes. And as a matter of fact, also made a museum out of it, right? Yes. yes. And what do you attempt to do with and we're going to see the museum, of course, but what is it you attempt to do? The, the, the heritage seekers attempt to sort of show what life was like in that period? Yes. Try to have several of the things that they would have had in. They would have had in the houses at the time or mm -hmm. whatever. Try to come up with as much as they can of the original time period. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a beautiful building, and it looks like you did a terrific job. How did you pick yellow and red for the colors? That was uh, historically uh, they tried to do the research, and they figured that that could have been or would have been a, a, store, a color that they had at the time. Mm -hmm. when they, yeah, and it is colorful. Well, let's go in. Okay. Well, Betsy Welty, as we look at uh, an imaginary person coming down the staircase uh, at the old uh, at the old Gardner Museum, um, we learned a little bit about the outside of this place. You know that it was on the stagecoach line uh, from here up to Des Moines, Iowa. Right. Um, but we're, now we're going to concentrate on the inside. 
of the house. Okay. And it's it's quite remarkable in that it doesn't look like it's been changed a whole lot. Did, was the attempt here to keep it as close to 1828 as possible? Pretty much, yes, yes. And, and, and it was probably pretty hard to do because stabilizing a building without looking like you're stabilizing a building is pretty tricky, I would yeah, think. I think the, the outside was, was a good hold. It was the inside that was really in this room. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then of course you have to you have to put drywall and you have to mm -hmm. do all these things without making it look like it's been updated, updated. too much, right? Mm -hmm. You want right. it to look like 1828. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's you and I go from here from this main hall and let's go into that first okay. first room and see what we've got, because what you what you try to do here is maintain as much of um, as much as Palmyra's history as you can. Yes. And much of these things are on loan from people who have helped you. Much uh, of it belongs uh, to the museum itself. Right. But the first cabinet you see, it looks like a new cabinet, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, what do we see in the new cabinet? This is some of the men's displays. Uh, this would be a collar or a hat, hat stretcher here. Now, um, I've never heard of a hat stretcher. Well, that's what that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the hat and mm -hmm. the straight edge razor, a mustache cup, you know, things that they used back in the 1800s. Yeah. Uh, this is a collar to make your collar, shirt collar stiff down here in the bottom there. Okay. Oh, I'm glad we don't have to wear those anymore. <laughs> oh. And then of course sh spats, shoe mm -hmm. spats. Mm -hmm. So Keep your shoes clean or mm -hmm. your bottom of your pants clean anyway. A watch fob. People don't even, in many cases, don't even have watches mm -hmm. anymore. They have right. smart watches, right. but nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and you, you know the the businesses that we're operating here. In fact, I, I really like this over here because you've got here's this came from the old train station, yes. I assume, right? Yes, yes, it sure did. Um, and and it has the list of the last arrival and, and departure. The yeah. last one was Quincy, Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, St. Louis via Quincy, and that was the last train that went out of here. Yeah. Do we know what year that would have been? Not for sure. No, let's not. see if we can locate that. Not uh, familiar with that one. Um, maybe I'll, maybe we'll maybe we'll find that out. And then this is some of the older businesses that was here: the cafe, an old old bull baseball. Out uniform. That's a baseball uniform. Yeah, that's a baseball uniform. And they were they they were sponsored by Wayans Cafe, well, huh? Yes. They, it looks like somebody slid into second and didn't <laughs> clean their uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and we had several shoe stores here, so there there's a couple of the shoe irons. Is that and how they stuff. used to measure kid? Like, the no, that, that's how they repaired them. They would have them on a oh, tall thing and then we sure. repair them. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they did a lot of repairing. Mm -hmm. Now you just buy new shoes, but right, back then you right. repaired them as often as you could. Right. And this one's dedicated to the ladies, um, the old jewelry, and the hats, and stuff. This hat kind of resembles the hat that Granny on Have Beverly Hillbillies wore. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. It sure does. It does. And then, of course, uh, some of the Native American. Look at the mm -hmm. Arrowhead collection. Yes. Now that's from a local farm here mm -hmm. in town. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, all on one farm? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. There's the old train. Is that the train station that's sign? That's the sign, yeah. Okay. William Jennings Bryan was a visitor to your opera house. Yes. And the opera house was destroyed in a tornado, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, 45. I think we have a picture of that that we'll get to see. Yeah. And, of course, the train that went in and out of here was a steam locomotive, and there's a picture there's of it. There's a picture of, right of one of them, Right up on the wall yeah. right there, yeah. One of the old food markets that... Uh, Snitchers, yeah. One of the signs. Down Main Street. Uh, this clock came from IGA. Uh, it w when you walked into IGA, that would be the first thing you saw mm -hmm. on the back wall. <laughs> now that would have been, let's see, when this was a stagecoach stop or, or an inn, that probably would have been the, one of the a parlor that you would go into first? Uh, the, yeah, and, uh, my imagination is that that would be where the ticket master was 
selling the tickets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a story that th they didn't have any windows in the in the windows so, or mm -hmm. you know any glass. And when a, win a tribe of Indians would go through, they would peek in there and frighten some of the ladies mm -hmm. that were sitting mm -hmm. in there. So they were just curious. And, and, and the room that we just went into, then this may have been the parlor. And you may have gone and okay, bought your top ticket yeah, there yeah. and then come in here to either get a drink or, or something to uh, eat yeah, or something like yeah, that. Um, yeah, uh, what I'm thinking is this was more or less the, the bar part. Mm -hmm. And then that room in there was the kitchen or the uh, restaurant part yeah. with tables, you know, yeah. a couple tables and we'll and get to that. But, but first, you know what, I want to back up into this front hall again because I forgot about this picture. Oh, yeah. And we've been talking about, about this being a stagecoach stop. And as a matter of fact, some years later, many years later, mm -hmm. this was found in a farmer's barn someplace mm -hmm. here in the Midwest. And it was traced back to be one of the stagecoaches that ran on this line. Right. Is that right? right? That's correct. Yes. And where did it finally end up? It is in the uh, uh, Jeff City. At, in, in, in the state capital. In the state capital. And, and it's on display. Yes. Well, isn't <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep. And this lady here, she was born here. Oh, she, I, re I recognize her. She uh, she didn't didn't get back. But Jane Darwell. Mm -hmm. She's from Palmyra. Yes. Yep. Oh, and there's her home. Mm -hmm. And yep. I remember her from I remember her from Grapes or Rat. That's mm -hmm. what I remember her mm -hmm. from. But you say she was in dozens and dozens she, of things. She survives. Yeah, she was even on a few TV shows, and she was mm -hmm. played a grandma on Lassie and uh, a couple others. Yeah, she's very familiar. In fact, mm -hmm. I think there may be some more scenes from. Oh no, that's from the tornado. That's we'll get to that tornado, later. Yeah. yeah, this is Dar Jane Darwell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, she's not the only film star you had. There was another one, too. We're yeah. going to learn more about more her, too. About, yeah. And this is some of the old um, sororities or, or clubs that, that we had that are no longer here. Um, some of them, let's see if I can find you one here. Uh, the uh, Shakespeare Club is in one of these here somewhere, <laughs> um, which, yeah, the Shakespeare club was organized in 1902, which I don't think they have that anymore. Mm -mm. Um, you know, different mm -hmm. things like, and of course we've got Kiwanis, and, which is still. Mm -hmm. You also have a lot of old clothes here that were, I guess, donated, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, they sure are. This, um, some of the, this was a Lucy Creese, which her father was the preach preacher that uh, Gave the last rites to the uh, ten massacred soldiers. Now this is an 1856 wedding dress mm -hmm. from her, right, mm -hmm. Lucy yes, Creed? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And that would have been, I assume, the same. Uh, now this is a, a different gentleman. This is a McClintocks or McClintigs, mm -hmm. and this was a different family. It's Dressed just, for uh, the wedding, though, mm -hmm. in yes. 1880. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then he's mm -hmm. here are other wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. This one from 1908. Yes. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then later on it was used as a, her daughter's wedding. We'll be back with more Muddy River Gems sponsored by Dot Foods in just a minute. From our trucks to their lunch trays to your local hospital, to your favorite pub, and to your kitchen table. For more than 60 years, Dot Foods and Dot Transportation have been stocking the shelves of your hometown. Sure, we've grown a lot, but at our core, we're still small town, family run businesses that care about our communities and the people who keep us running. Join the Dot family today and be part of something bigger. Why work at Dot? You could list out individual qualities forever. There's a lot of opportunities. They take care of the employees. They take care of the community. So our pay, our benefits, it's competitive. Time off, tons of flexibility. They're willing to work with you to help you advance.
Now we're leaving the old, the part of the uh, original building, and we're in an additional spa addition space here, mm -hmm. right? Right. Right. Of course, you had physicians in town. Everybody had physicians, physicians. but not everybody knows the kind of tools and uh, and remedies they used, and that's what no. this is dedicated yes, to. Yes, yes. The, the the leg part, the artificial leg. Now, how mm. well, that would have been mm. a struggle. Oh, it sure would. My mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. Everything would have been a struggle. They really <laughs> had no way to oh, to assuage the pain and uh, all right, of the right. cutting and. Oh, imagine the infections that would have been. Oh, uh, yeah, the, there, there's the lancer, mm. lancers, you know, the, the cut open the thing, infections. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, here's a good picture, and this shows Palmyra in 1869. Mm -hmm. um, you can see there's a whole lot more to Palmyra oh, now yeah, than there was yeah. then. It's still growing. That's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was. It's. It's been the, always been the county seat, right? Yes. So it was, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a little bit of a controversy about it because Hannibal wanted it, but uh, yeah, it ended up him. here. <laughs> don't blame him. Can't have it though. Sorry. No, no. Um, okay, and then somebody added a kitchen. So, yeah, at some this point. is yeah, s somewhere along the line, and mm -hmm. this is our newest addition to the. That's nice. To, somebody to the, really went on a search for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, he came to us. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they were getting ready to tear down his homestead. Uh, home and uh, he didn't want to destroy this so he asked if we would oh, uh, like it. That and is nice from 19 is. from 1900 about 1900 mm -hmm. um, and it was donated by James and Marilyn Bauer mm -hmm. and he just wanted to make sure that it was in good hands. Yes. Good for him. Okay. What about this uh, cabinet or this buffet over here? That uh, was down Belonged to a family down that lived down around what they called Marion City, mm -hmm. and uh, the flood came, and the, his, he moved his family up to uh, Palmyra, and he went back to get some furniture and stuff. And the last load that he went to go get, this cabinet was on it, and the wagon wheel broke, mm -hmm. and he lost his life and lost oh, that. Lost his life. Yeah, yeah. So. And then his family uh, went down and retrieved what was down there and came, brought it up to town. And mm -hmm. a f his family had moved to Minden, Illinois, and they uh, was going to try to fix it, but it, mm -hmm. it was too much. So they brought it here, knowing that it was, you know, originated from this area. Mm -hmm. So, so, it, so it, re it returned home again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, the fact that it's all beat up is actually tells the story. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to fix it, do you? No, yeah? no. On our way upstairs, Betsy, we, we really should stop and take a look at this because in April of 1945, there was a very traumatic event here in Palmyra. And these pictures show what the tornado of April 12th, 1945 did. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we look at this first picture over here, and I mistakenly called this the Opera House no, before. No, no, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, right. And it was, you can see that if there'd been any activity going on there, there would have been a lot of lives lost. Yes. They had canceled the ball because uh, the president had passed away. And if he, if they had not canceled it, there mm -hmm. would have been several lives Oh, sure. Lost. I mean, there would have been mm -hmm. hundreds of people in there. And you mm -hmm. can see these, these signs for various scenes from mm -hmm. the buildings just right. absolutely destroyed and had to be just torn down. Mm -hmm. Do we know whether there were any fatalities? Well, I day? believe there was one fatality. Just and one. That Isn't that mm -hmm. remarkable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And this tornado, this particular tornado went on across the river into Quincy and did some damage in Quincy, mm -hmm. Illinois also. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on from that. <laughs> Now, when this was a stagecoach stop, there would have been people probably on some occasions trying to spend the night here. Yes. Because uh, you had to you, you had to stop somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's assume what these two street front rooms are. Um, they're 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 nice big rooms. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a little different then, wasn't it? You didn't get your own room in your own bathroom. No, no, you had to share your room with other other people. Mm -hmm. And um, I would imagine there were different bed, you know, several beds, you know, in here. So yeah, and and yeah. The, uh, the story has it, and I believe this is true because I've read this other places, 
the, the women and children got the larger of the two rooms. That's what I believe, yeah. Yep. And so, and if you look at this, right, of course, you have this really nicely appointed with a lot of things to see, which we're not going to be able to see all of them. But this would have been the room where the kids probably sleep in blankets on the floor. Yeah. Or mom gives them the bed and she sleeps, uh, cuddles up in a room, mm -hmm. so in a, in a corner somewhere. In a chair or something. Um, but, uh, but it would be, yeah, it would be, uh, mm -hmm. this would be the sleeping quarters. Mm -hmm. And after, actually, it would feel really good after being on a stagecoach all day. I would imagine Just so. being That'll on the be floor a, would be really a, nice. A bum, bumpy ride. Oh, this is a this this is quite the the tub for the little kids. Well, to, you know what? I walked right by it without even <laughs> noticing. That the, they'll they'll say, well, where where's the faucet? You know, well, you didn't have a faucet. You had to <laughs> fill right. it up with the that's water. Right. You bring and buckets then, of water. Yeah, that's what and you it, do. It is it's it's metal with a wooden mm -hmm. casing around it. So yeah. yeah. And of course, and they, they might wonder what that is too. Yeah, is it? Yeah, well, there was no sure. indoor plumbing. Yep. There was no running water. Yeah, you did everything by hand. Well, and, you... and then there's the the jar over there. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so, then of course the men they had to keep the men separate because they smoked cigars and drank and stank. Smoked cigars, chewed tobacco, and, yep. you know that all thing. But so. uh, this would have been their side, mm -hmm. and and actually, you know, they probably welcomed that anyway because they probably didn't really get a chance to take a bath, and they all just stay over there together. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Um, this is interesting because this is this is a really nice piece of local history. Mm -hmm. um, after World War One, um, to commemorate those who served in the armed mm -hmm. forces at that time, these folks in Marion County made this flag, and, mm -hmm. and you pick it up from there if you would. The, the red stars are for the uh, the ones that got wounded, and the yellow stars are for the de the ones that died, mm -hmm. and the blue stars are the ones that are still serving, or were serving. Mm -hmm. And that, that came home okay, mm -hmm. or yeah, were still mm -hmm. survived. And this flag, uh, after the dedication, uh, somehow got put away in a wall in Marion County Courthouse. And when they did a little bit of a renovation, they found it and brought it up to here. It's in very so. good condition. Mm -hmm. You know, usually things like this, that they've been stored in a, just locked away somewhere, they have moth holes mm -hmm. in them, you know, stuff like that. Right. This one looks right. really good. Really yeah. good. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. That's a big building up there. Do that's, we know what that's That's the courthouse. That's the courthouse. Yeah, it's, that's, is it still there? That, that, yes. It's still here? Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. I believe this is the second courthouse. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, the one that's standing now would be the third. Oh, okay. So, so this has been torn down. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. But uh, some of it. Yeah. It's I mean, a big one. You'll you'll see it when you go towards the jail. Yeah. So. Okay. Now going back out into the another area that was added on, um, we call this what the Ingram room. Ingram Rose, room. Rose right? Ingram. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Rose. Rose was born and raised here in Palmyra. Uh, her last name was Berghofer. Her father owned a harness shop mm -hmm. and, and um, several other uh, businesses. And then she married a man by the last name of Inman, and uh, her mother-in-law realized that she had a good singing voice and got her started in opera. And she went on to to become a star, and she's done several commercials, as you can see here, from Mr. Coffee, Comet, Dawn. Rose Ingram, mm -hmm. and uh, she's got a lot of publicity shots here. She is mm -hmm. lovely. Yep. Um, she had a television career, and but you say mostly an opera singer. Her, yes, her fame yeah. was as an she, opera yeah, singer. Th uh, opera and theater. So. Mm -hmm. There's more to see over here. This is interesting. Um, she did. She did have roles with some some pretty famous folks. Yes, Ray Bolger. Yeah, Ray Bolger there. Who was the scarecrow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman that's pictured on the the left there is uh, her godson. Uh, his last name was Hutcherson, and he became a top ca cardiologist. And uh, those these two people remembered Palmyra very well. Mm-hmm. And that picture there that you're looking at now, yeah. that that's her father's. Th uh, this one, that's his shop. Mm-hmm. Okay. One of them, yes. And this is where Rose was born. Mm-hmm. And 
and then they later song. moved to here yeah. when the family made it had a little more money and grew up there and uh, then she went on to fame hmm. and that's some of her um, mink stoles and things like that too so some and she, her. she and her family wanted to make sure that that this got taken care yes, of here. Yes, yes. In fact, yeah. they, they were benefactors of the museum as well, weren't they? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah. Well, so. you can't do something like this without friends, and, and friends hopefully have a little bit of money to throw at the, right, at the project, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, and because there's a lot to, lot to keep up on yeah. uh, inside and out. Yeah. So, yeah. Just blocks away, across from the courthouse, the same history lovers, the heritage seekers, also administer this historic site. The Marion County Jail, which dates to 1858, it was a federal prison during the Civil War. Carol Brettlinger, you're the curator of the old jail That's in Marion County. Mm -hmm. And this is a fascinating place. Now, this is not unique. This was a home that the sheriff right. and his family lived in. That's correct. Yes. And on the back of the building was built this enormous, solid, impenetrable jail. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, and it was big. I mean, it could it could handle dozens of prisoners. Yes, it and could. it had a female. And then had the female so upstairs. And we can look at that door right there. That mm -hmm. went to the female prison. They had the big wooden doors to buffer the noise for the family. Very fascinating part of history here, and we don't want to get into this too much right now because we're going to come back. Okay. But in 1858, just prior to the Civil War. The people that were here, working here and living here, had no idea what this jail was going to become. No, at the time. they did not. No. They... Would you take us back and give sure, us a look? Sure, I'd be glad to. They left the door. I assume you want that closed. Now that's a hunk of iron. That is a hunk of iron. When they went to scrape it off and repaint it, uh, they had to use a crane to lift it oh into my, the back of the I'll truck. Bet, I'll yeah. bet. So. How they got these things in place is just amazing. And they shipped all of this from Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you would have had the other doors. Ugh. Look how heavy that is. Okay. Yeah. So this that's the initial door, and what the sheriff was able to do is he was able to unlock it, and then by pushing, but. It, he would put the prisoner in first and push the prisoner back right, into that Right, into cubby. the sally port. Sally port, port. okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that would secure him while he got into the secondary door. Right, okay. so that nobody could escape while he was unlocking the cell. Okay, so that so. goes back. Uh -huh. And this opens, okay. Boy, that's heavy duty. Yes, it is. And, <laughs> and look at the, look at the... The, this uh, stone. This, this, yeah. The stone that's that's it's, built here. It's and wow. it's got the cannonball inside it mm -hmm. on each seam. And these enormous iron plates. And everything's of the iron work is original. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Um, Carol, thank you so much for this mini tour. We're going to sure. come back, okay? Okay. All right. Um, we will come back for another Muddy River Gem because this is too it is too good to slight. Um, but I do want to remind you before we tell you that we're coming back here. Both the Gardner Museum and this uh, are run by the Heritage Seekers. You can find them on their website. Actually, I accessed it through the Gardner Museum and you'll find a link to both places. And if you want to see these places, you can make arrangements by calling and making an appointment. Or come summertime, they'll be open on a regular basis. Now with a muddy, another Muddy River Gem brought to you by Dot Foods, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. This episode of Muddy River Gems was brought to you by Dot Foods.